All right, uh, another topic, and this relates to the Browns and the Jets. A couple of players on social media getting into fights with fans. Jerome Whitehead, or Jermaine Whitehead, excuse me, over the top to the point where he's been cut by the Browns. He had some awful things he said last night on Twitter directed to Browns fans. The team issued a statement calling the tweets on social media totally unacceptable, highly inappropriate. We immediately spoke with Jermaine upon learning of these comments. The Browns in no way condone that type of language or behavior. This matter will be further addressed internally. That was last night. By today, Whitehead is gone. Same thing happened for the Jets. Cornerback Daryl Roberts posted some stuff on Twitter or social media. I'm not sure whether it was Twitter or Instagram or what. I'm sorry, but it's got to be said. All y'all fake-ass fans effing kill me with that negative SH bleep T. If you're going to – you know, we've already cursed galore on this. I don't know, what, like galore, I don't know why Just we're being careful. It. If we're gonna ro- if you're gonna rock with us, then rock with us. But it ain't if if it if you ain't shut the, the f up, please and go like another team. That's Daryl Roberts, and I, it's it's just amazing how social media has become such a driving force in the existence of folks in their teens and twenties, and and even like you know I, I I look and and see what the interaction is. You can't get upset about that. You got to learn that you you gain nothing by giving into that temptation to fight someone. Definitely. I mean, what, what what the hell? Come on. I mean, first of all, Jermaine Whitehead, what the hell are you doing? I mean, that was just like that you couldn't that couldn't be dumber and more stupid. He he I mean, he there's a good chance he never sees the NFL again because of that. And what I want to say to all players is why the hell are you getting in the locker room and checking social media right away? Like you like cool off, take a shower, process the game a but little bit. But they do it right away. I know, and it's because it shows you that social media is addictive. It's I mean, we know this. These are these are real issues. It's it's affecting our whole country. It's affecting our whole world. And I just don't get it, and especially as an especially NFL when, football especially player, when people are driving in their cars checking social media. Well, you you know that. It drives me crazy. I mean, they should be arrested and thrown in jail for the night. I mean, I'm sick of that too. If I have to drive one guy by one more guy in the fast lane who's on Instagram or on Facebook, why he's going 70? I mean, really, they should be like, I, I want to be like, uh, there should be a public stoning for that. You're going to put us all at danger because you got to check what's cool on Instagram. But as an NFL player, what the hell are you doing? Who gives a damn with a bunch of fans who really don't understand the game and its full completeness anyways and are just emotional about the loss too? Why are you even giving it credence? I just don't understand it. It just, it's like, you got to be smarter than that as players. And, and especially if you're not a superstar player, you're not going to win that battle if you're a bottom of the roster player your ass is going to get cut and I mean Daryl Roberts he probably hangs in there because he's more of a a vital piece to that defense but um, I mean he's certainly going to get a talking to today by the Jets and I mean he does something like that again I bet you his butt gets cut too I'm sorry, are you saying something? That was, that was a funny dog video. Oh, yeah, of course you Instagram. were. Yeah, yeah, that's what you do. That's what you do. <laughs> right. um, but you're right. There's a point where you got to be able to control yourself. And I, I don't know how much coaching goes into this, what kind of messages are sent to the players, because th- this is the kind of stuff that you would think would be avoidable. Now, for a team that can't get out of its own way, like the Browns and the Jets, this is very far down on the list of priorities. But – you wonder, is it a chicken and the egg type of thing? Is this why they suck? Do they have too many guys in the locker room who have like this miswiring in their brains and they're not properly focused on the things that they should focus on? Like, we're never going to hear anything like this happen with the Patriots. You're not going to have a story on a Monday. Watch, it's going to happen now. No, You're never going to have won't. a story on a Monday that somebody from the Patriots decided to launch into a Twitter tirade because even though Bill Belichick acts like he doesn't know what social media is, he knows what it is, yeah. and he's going to know if you do something you shouldn't do, and if you do something you shouldn't do, your ass is gone. Yeah, no, it's it's. I mean, it's it's laid out in simple terms. It's just in New England, you you know what you can and can't do from this moment you step in that door, and you conform, or they get you out of there, and they don't need you. I mean, just like what they did to Michael Bennett. I mean, look, what, how much money did they give Michael Bennett? They gave him a, how many what how many million signing bonus? Four or five million dollar signing and bonus. See you later. Yeah, see you later. Hey, they did Antonio Brown. Right. Antonio, and I want add him into the conversation. What the hell are you doing? Nobody wants to sign you in the league. And now all of a sudden Antonio Clown becomes a thing in the Halloween and you like, he's got to attack all those people on social media, which is only going to invite people to do stuff like that more because they're going to go, Oh, look, I'm some idiot from wherever. And I'm some idiot from New Jersey. And they love nothing Antonio, more than Antonio to bait Brown's you. Brown's yeah. skin. This is awesome. Yeah. He's actually mad at me. 
from New Jersey. I mean, like, whatever. That, that, just that is it. the one thing to remember. If you're in the public eye, if you have a significant following on social media, they are trying to bait you because that's going to make their day. If you respond to them, if you react to them, and it is a, a very potent temptation. It's hard. I know. And uh, I'm sure you give in to it from time to I time. I do. Well, it's a good thing. The, the, the best thing I have going for me is, and I do, I flip through my social media, but I try not to tweet directly uh, more times than not. And, if, and when I do want to send a tweet out, I send it to actually somebody here at NBC, as you know, Matt Casey, who then kind of looks at it and he's my filter because I can get emotional just like players can too. I get it. You know, sometimes a guy attacks me and I want to be like, man, you're so wrong in everything you said, but I can't really, I just can't deal with it. And it's just, it is, it's frustrating, but hey, live in the moment, enjoy life around you. Not everybody gets stuck in their phone and their iPad all the time and reading all this crap. As you watch this video on your phone, that would be the great irony. Well, this is not social media. We're talking about something at least irrelevant to football news and like having a conversation about it, which you I shouldn't know. do. But yeah, I know. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.